What's up guys? Hey, we're so pumped to have you on a wedding day with Glory Visuals. We've been asked so many questions doing this thing for over a year and a half now. What better way than to bring you along in our wedding day? What are yeah. we gonna do today? So we're filming our friend Leah and David's wedding film today. If you're a new filmmaker, an insight into how to shoot a wedding, if you've been doing weddings for a while, hopefully you learned something new or you can tell us something that we don't do in the comments. Yep. Cool, follow me. Something that I feel like we're really good at is being super innovative. You only have so much time on a wedding day. You have to make quick decisions. You have to get a great shot. You can't sacrifice the shot. And so lighting is troubling at times. The building is dark or not aesthetically pleasing at times. And so you have to make the shot look great. Sometimes we have to be innovative and take the dress into places that maybe maybe not the safest places in the world. Yeah. <laughs> or, you gotta risk it for the shot. You gotta risk so, it for the shot. Check out this clip. We didn't have a camera for this part, <laughs> but Nye recorded some video on his phone yeah. and see what we did with the dress. Yeah. Because the building that we're in is just not, it's not working for the dress. There's no windows. Innovation. So as soon as we get to a wedding, we like to show up uh, when the bride's kind of midway through makeup. Um, we learned through experience that showing up before the bride starts makeup or even during the makeup just really isn't helpful. So we stopped doing that. Um, we just started coming during kind of in the middle somewhere because really all we want to shoot is the finishing touches or after they're done with makeup. Um, so during this time, we got the dress out of the way as you saw. Um, doing details now with the shoes and the rings and stuff and then um, once the bride's done then we'll grab some shots with her so here we go wave this like into the shot or something you know what I mean I mean, probably need one like a baby ghost costume I just put this around the camera and you just look through it what's the point of that I don't know <laughs> that's, that's the point I like that Communication is super important. So, if you're having to change your white balance, you always want to communicate that to the other shooter. This is the scariest part of my day, being responsible for stuff like this. So if you have a nice flat surface, even surface, you can grab any sort of cloth and uh, pull your rig and get a little slider shot. So we'll show you. In a slider shot, and you want to slow it down. Make sure you slide faster than you think you need to because you're going to slow down the shot. Okay, so now we're going to take the bride outside. Why outside, you may ask? Well, this is pretty much the lighting in the entire building. When you have an awesome bride that cooperates and wants to do awesome stuff, it makes everything and everyone and all the world better. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. This is true. <laughs> She's cool. She's humble too. I'm at uh, 6,000, about 3,200 shutter, 4,000 maybe. Innovation. Literally gonna like cross leg it right here. <laughs> gonna get that really long shot. Okay, tell me what to do with myself. Oh, that's freaking sick. <laughs> Teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. What just happened there was it could have went awful, but yep. we went for it and got a cool shot. Check it out. I'm eating plants because I'm a herbivore. These pars don't have accurate whites like those do. Oh, right. So you always want to assess your lighting situation. Um, sometimes the lighting is just bad and you have to roll with it. 
biggest tip I would give, you shouldn't really have much downtime in a wedding day. If you have downtime, use that as an opportunity to get a shot that you wouldn't normally yep. go fly the drone. Yeah, after you do this for a long time, in your edits, you'll start to get bored because you're not being creative in your shots. I just don't want you to get to the point of shooting 30, 40 weddings and then being like, wow, this is getting boring. Just get creative right away. It'll make the editing process better and it'll make the film way better. Yep. Well, like the ones with like the built-in lenses are like the cheap, crappy ones. Oh, because you can't. Uh, anyone it. that you can like mount a lens to, they're always like too nice. <clears throat> why don't you just, why don't you just like saw off the lens? Oh yeah, you could do that. Just, <laughs> just take like a, like a, oh, yeah. a saw. You just like take like a, yeah, you just, you just cut it off, like, right yeah. there. And then you just, like, gaff tape the other ones to it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's, that's how you do it. Dude, guys, that's, What have we been doing? Uh, one other big tip, and this is more of a, it is somewhat personal preference, but I think it's a good tip, is we shoot exclusively with prime lenses. Um, I know a lot of you, if you're a one-man band, you gotta kinda use a zoom lens or whatever. Um, we've just found that to really make a wedding film great, you need two shooters on different focal lengths. They provide different perspectives. Like you can see in the shot that we got outside of Leah doing her makeup, that shot wouldn't have been possible with the 35. It would have been too wide. The perspective wouldn't have been as cool looking down all the you know leading lines. Yep. You would have seen cars in the parking lot. And so use a lens that's set and get closer or further away from your subject. Yeah. So pro that's tip right. number seven. 27. Number seven. Number 40. Pick number three, my lord. <laughs> Is this Shrek? Yeah. Austin, are you there? Oh, he's invincible. What are your nutrition tips for uh, wedding day? Oh man, if you don't eat, you need to eat anything. But mostly, something. Austin Hall, ladies and gentlemen. In other words, but. Is it safe to go in here yet? Yeah? The wedding days can be super stressful on the groom, on the bride, and what we do as a company, we try to make uh, it as stressless as possible. And so when things like go crazy and there's a lot going on and you want to be a problem solver, like when the groom forgets t shirts, you go buy them t shirts because that's what you do to make the day better. So we have. A little bit of downtime. We, the guys just all showed up. Sometimes they're running behind. Most of the time they're running behind. So we're gonna be proactive instead of just kind of hanging out. We're gonna look for an opportunity to sit down and get some good lighting for the letter reading. So let's go do that. Eh. Slim pickings. I want it shut. This is so weird. He's ready. She's getting ready right now. So we're going to take him outside and just get some shots of just him. Um, it's good to have shots of each of the couple uh, on their own just because it's good to have it. So I'm going to take advantage of the time we have right now until she's in her dress and we can shoot the buttoning and all that good stuff. So yeah, we're going to take David out, do some B-roll and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we'll wait when they're doing letters here in a bit. So. Stars are tracing the sky like city windows. I watch you reflect in your eyes. So to mic up the groom, we're using the DR10 L task cams. They're awesome. But uh, Austin's going to shoot the bride, uh, the dress getting put on. And I'm micing this bad boy up. And then we're going to do the letter reading here in a minute. So. Here we go. Okay. Sometimes things don't go as planned, but it's okay, because you just roll with it. Because... So sometimes things get chaotic. People are, you know, coming in and out, families showing up, you know, people are getting dresses on, the guys aren't ready or they are ready. Something's gonna happen inevitably, 
but what you have to do is just assess the situation and don't be afraid to direct moments. If you have to call a shot, do it in a kind way, do it in a respectful way, but just to help everyone out. If you can see a problem or you can fix something, just fix it. Um, if you can see a shot that you need to get, there's a couple minutes of downtime or there's something that you could do to make the situation better, just go after it. So what I'm trying to say is, don't add to the chaos or just be a part of the chaos. Try to help out, try to make things go smooth. All right guys, so we just shot the bride and groom over there doing letter readings and praying together, which is super important. We always encourage our brides, if they're writing a letter, just read it aloud for the film. If there's anything that they don't want in there, we'll just cut it out. It's so important to have good audio from the day. It can really carry the film and make the difference between an okay montage of shots over a song to an actual film with a story. And we're just wrapped up with that. Now what are we doing? So now we are miking up the officiant, we're miking up the groom, and then we're also plugging in the H4M Pro to the board as a fail safe because if for some reason, which this has never happened, but if for some reason the DR10Ls do fail, we at least have the board audio. And so anyone that's talking into a microphone, we have that as a backup. It looks okay, and then the lights up there like look fine too, I think, still. Sure. So. Cool. cool, thanks bro. Alright guys, so we just mic'd up the groom, mic'd up the efficient, plugged audio into the board, which is sometimes a fun challenge. Um, so you have to work well with the DJ or sound guy, whoever, um, and really just be nice to them so that they'll give you what you want, which is a plug in to plug in a recorder. True. Um, about to start the ceremony, we're gonna go through who's gonna be standing where, just kinda get a game plan. Um, everything's ready to go, and uh, now we're ready to get these two married. Yeah, we are. This is our friend Clyde, and he has an amazing channel all about finances. You gotta check him out. So, shooting during the guests coming in sometimes is awkward because they're trying to like sit down and you're like, hey, I got this thing up in your grill, but just shoot them anyway. ceremony is done. It's kind of like the stressor kind of part of the day where you just make sure you capture, make sure you... Our cameras only record for 30 minutes and the ceremony is longer than that so we have to look at each other across the room. Hey, are you good? Stop, start, stop, start so that we can uh, make sure we capture the whole thing. So we did it. Now we grab the audio from the board, we grab the lavalier mics off of the efficient and uh, off of the groom and now we're heading to the reception. Trip. I love road trips, dude. Same. Road trips. Oh, are I my did favorite. this earlier watching the NBA, dude. Oh, they're coming around right to the house. He's trying to eat. Holy crap! That was extreme! Yeah, so when you're shooting a wedding, the most important thing that you want to just make sure is that you hit press the record button. Um, as long as you do that, everything else kind of falls in place. When you make sure you press the record button, there's just, there's something that happens, you know? Yeah, there's just something about it. What's up, guys? We're here at the reception venue. Just got here, bride and groom just got here. We're about to go do some portraits with the couple, and we'll come back here, do the reception, and shoot some stuff, and make cool videos out of it. And then this, Darren, everyone. 
Hi. They were like, wow! <laughs> I uh, just plugged in the audio into the board, or actually we just ran it out from the DJ speaker so that we can get the speeches, the blessing, and uh, all that good stuff. So about to start the reception, kick it off. Just did our portrait session with the couple, which honestly is the toughest part because you kind of have to work with the photographer. And sometimes it can be frustrating because you don't feel like you have enough and you know maybe the photographers kind of dominating the situation because um, obviously they have to get what they need too but you just have to work through it and get what you can with what you have yeah about to start the reception let's go good job austin he's doing such a good job isn't he doing a good job he's doing look, a good job look at him would you just look at him you know, actually is this rolling because that would suck oh dang <laughs> it wasn't Dude, sixlets though, they don't have them here, but oh. they're my jam. Really hard right now. <laughs> don't go to the gym before you have to do this all day, okay? Okay, good talk. That's amazing. That's how you do it right there. I was like really nervous typing all that. I want an exclamation mark. Oh, not a fan. They didn't have this back then. So it's about to go down. They're about to announce the wedding party. So the DJ will announce it. Um, we get two angles of that. Austin will run with the glide cam, follow them, get a cool shot of them doing their little trick or dance or whatever, handshake. And then I'll just get in a shot with 85. Okay, so you get to the reception. Reception's always crazy because there's so many things going on. So yeah. you gotta make sure you have audio plugged into the board, that yeah. it's recording. You have to make sure you're capturing the speeches. Mm -hmm. um, speeches is something that we personally deliver as a video to our clients. And that's really the main thing. We ate dinner, watched the video that we put together, the love story, which was really sweet. Um, everybody seemed to really love that. And then from then on, it's really just the first dances. Um, what do we typically do? We didn't actually do this for this wedding, but what do we usually do for first dances? So right now, uh, our setup is very minimal again. Like we run and gun a lot. It's very simple setup, but we run with one light. It's a 120D Mark II. We set that up in the best location that we can in the room, depending on the venue. Sometimes we bounce light off of the ceiling and use that to kind of fill the space that they're dancing in. Sometimes we'll just straight up no softbox, just blare it into the dance space so that you can kind of get a cool flare every now and then. So it just depends on what we're feeling and how we want to light the space, but we rock with that. Today we actually did it because it was pretty well lit and our light would actually be conflicting with all the other lighting yeah. that was in the room. For the actual dances, you know, there's the father-daughter dance, the, the son and mother dance, and then there's obviously the bride and groom dance. So there's all three of those dances that are really, really crucial to the wedding film. So we want to make sure we capture a little bit of emotion that we get um, just a, a good like few seconds at least. He ran glide cam, actually. So I ran glide so cam. Austin ran glide cam for that. We do a couple shots around just to get some cool different feels and then running a tight 85 just getting good emotion and uh, looks that way anyways um, we're gonna go shoot the dances that's pretty much it we will stay at dances until the dance dies down and it's not really a point for us to be there anymore mm -hmm. um, unless the bride has a special exit sparkler exit something like that we'll always stay for that yeah we hope that if you're an aspiring wedding filmmaker or you're shooting weddings now, you've been shooting weddings for a while, um, hopefully like this is helpful to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do anything cool or fun that we don't do, we'd love to know it, so let us know. 
Um, but let us know if you learned something new. We love you. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe as always. And we'll see you soon.